Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Streaming Alchemy Show. I'm John Mahoney, and today we're going to be taking a look at production automation. What is it? How it works? And give you a couple of examples of ways you could apply it in your own productions using both vMix and TriCaster. But before we get there, uh, I want to take care of a little bit of housekeeping. First, like all our shows, we will be taking live video callers. So if you have a question or want to make a comment about something we're talking about, please feel free to connect at the URL below and somebody from the studio will get you on air to join us. The other thing I wanted to mention is that Facebook has made some changes to their API, so we can no longer pull comments from our Streaming Alchemy Facebook group. So we'd love to have you join the group, but we're going to be using the public Streaming Alchemy page from going forward to actually stream the live shows from. So let's get started with today's show. So probably if we think about automation, uh, we think about it in the traditional sense where we are talking with uh, you know, regular industry folks and different types of automation that's going on in the workplace. But there's also uh, production-based automation, automation of the typical production tasks people do. And what this really means is it's taking the manual repetitive tasks that are part of every production and packaging them now as sequences of computer-driven actions. So if we're looking at this as a uh, as sort of a baseline, why is it that you even care? Why would you use automation in your productions? And the first and probably most important reason is simplification. By being able to take and leverage com uh, computer technology to automate steps that can be done in a production, you can make your operational workflow much simpler. And this, this in turn means that you can deliver higher on air quality. And that's for two reasons. First, you can do the things that are sort of the jacks are better, the key things that need to be done as a part of every production. You can do those flawlessly. The other piece though, is you free up operator time to now do other value added things, whether that's things directly on screen or new capabilities that you wanna add to your studio to do you know, more, uh, more well-integrated uh, caller, better lower thirds, anything that could sort of enrich the production, whether it's getting on air or, or it's behind the scenes. The other thing you avoid is you, re you can avoid mistakes. Uh, and that's a big deal. Every production has some level of foul-ups, things that were pressed out of sequence or that didn't go as planned. And using automation, you now have the ability to sort of dial back on some of those mistakes. And you know that gives you a certain comfort and gives you the ability to, to take more risks because, again, the basics are nailed. And the other piece is that automation can actually help you reduce the cost of running a production. Not only can you do more with an individual, but in certain situations, you may not need to have two individuals working with something because you freed up some of the attention of, say, the, your technical director running your switcher, and he can do more things with the CG work that's going on for lower thirds. So again, there are, there are lots of values for you know, looking at adding automation to your own productions. But this comes down to sort of, well, what really is going on with automation? And the first element to, to automation that, that most people think about is macros. And macros are really just a sequence of keystrokes or button presses that would normally be done by an operator, but now all bundled together. Uh, these sequences can be timed. You can add pauses or other things, but it tends to be a linear sequence of steps that an operator would take. But for some types of automation, that isn't always going to be good enough. And so there's another element when we talk about automation called scripts. And what a script does is it applies logic to the linear workflow of a macro and allows you now to make decisions based on the state of things. So if a certain camera is on air, you may choose to follow one path of uh, steps to execute. But if it's off air, you may actually want to do an entirely different set of steps. So things that 
have logic behind them that require some level of decision making based on state and data, scripts are perfect for that. But with either of these, you still need to have some way to trigger them. How do you actually say, execute this macro or run this script? So in looking at things, they're called triggers, they can be called shortcuts. There are different names, but triggers tends to be sort of a universally understood concept when it comes to automation. The common one that most people think about are their keypads, the X keys or things like the Stream Deck that we looked at, looked at last week. So that would be something where you can assign a key to a specific macro or specific script. And that's great, but that isn't the only types of triggers that exist. You can also have triggers that are based on something that actually is happening in your production. So for instance, uh, a video has just ended playing. So what do I want to do when that video ends? Or a camera has gone into program. What do I want to do when that camera is on program? You can also do triggers that are based on time. Uh, or timers, things that sort of do a countdown to a certain point and then trigger an action. So again, this is a part of more structured, uh, more structured productions to have that type of automation. But again, uh, another type of trigger. Data can also uh, trigger actions. So you may turn around and be running a financial show and want to know when a stock breaks a certain price and display that as a lower third on the screen. Those types of things now can be done, again, as a trigger with macros. Uh, the other thing, and this is the most significant one and probably the most far-reaching in terms of its impact, you can actually do triggers from other applications. And now when we talk about artificial intelligence coming into the production space, this is where you're going to see that. You could have technology running that listens to what a host or a guest is saying and based on specific words or phrases that they say, trigger certain actions to happen. So again, very, very powerful and will have a greater impact going forward on how automation plays out in the production space. The other piece uh, really though is that anything that changes state uh, inside your production can potentially be a trigger for that production, for that macro, that sequence, automation sequence. So, as opposed to spending a lot of time sort of going through this theoretically, I'd like to do two demos uh, that hopefully will give you a sense. The, the first one will be uh, a demo in vMix that shows how you could do an automated startup sequence for a made-up show I created called uh, Computer Builder. So let me switch over now to vMix here. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the intro that we set up, and then we're going to go through it in vMix to show you exactly how we put this together. So let me get going here. And OK, let's go. Okay, so that was the intro, and there were a lot of things that were going on in there. We started out playing an intro video, went to a title that we had for the name of the show, the, the name of the episode, and then we switched to another camera, put on a lower third, and uh, we did a few other things in the background around all that. So let me go over to uh, vMix here, and I'll walk you through exactly what we did. So. If you look at the layout for this production, I have a set of inputs laid out here. To the left-hand side, we have the intro video for the computer show. That was what played first. Following that, we have a video that we used for the background for our title for the episode that we were showing. And we had a couple of assets that were linked to that title, the shimmering sound you heard when it started to play, and the actual title itself. Then we have the camera that came up and we had the, the host title. So these are all the elements that we have uh, already set up in vMix. And 
the way we did this is we set up what vMix has called triggers that allow me to sequence a set of steps that will uh, play out in a production. So let's start with the computer show uh, video. So in this video, we have four triggers that are set up. Right over here, we have ones for when the video uh, started, when it actually you know, moved into the uh, program. Uh, and then we have a set of actions for when the video completed. So those are sort of what we talk through. But on the video transition, the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm taking the background video for the title and just resetting that to make sure it starts playing right at the very beginning. Then, as soon as the intro video completes, that's the on completion, I fade over to the second title video. And that's what you saw happen at the second sequence. After that, sort of starting at the same time, let me put it a different way, at the completion of the video, which you see right here, but delayed by three and a half seconds, we actually did the switch to the main camera. So again, this is sort of the big arc that you're seeing going on here. And then the last step is when we went to the main camera, four seconds into this sequence now, we actually put our secondary camera up on the preview monitor. So they were all set to get started with the production. So this first set of triggers really triggered the big arc. But now when each of these things launched, they had their own set of triggers. So if I go into the title sequence next, you can see I have three triggers here. The first one played that shimmering sound that you heard, and that was the on transition in. Uh, on transition in, I also started to display the title graphic that was overlaying that. And then two seconds later, that's the 200 millisecond delay you, you see here, I actually switched that title off. And based on what we said at the beginning, this was just the time that the original trigger in the first video switched us over to the main camera here. So when we switch to the main camera, we have a new set of trigger, triggers uh, set up that basically wait for one second after that camera goes on program. You can see that right here. And then it turns on the overlay for the lower third with the host name. And then three and a half seconds later, at four and a half seconds into the camera switch, it actually uh, goes back and uh, takes that lower third off. So this whole sequence now, uh, if I can, I'll just, I'll just play it again here so you can see it uh, playing out here on the vMix interface itself. Uh, in this whole sequence now, you're seeing everything sort of move through these steps. And now that I've described it, hopefully you'll have a better sense for the types of things we did here. All right, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to show you a slightly different uh, sequence, automation sequence, that this one we're doing with the new tech TriCaster. And uh, it's, let me switch over here. Okay, and I'm gonna take over control of the interface. Okay, so if we, uh, before I get into it, why don't I show you the sequence first and I'll talk through it and then we can go into the interface on the TriCaster and give you a bit more background for how I set it up. So. This is a case where you may want to have a movie review show. And in this show, you would have a host on the side that can be giving commentary about what's going on in the film. But now, if I stop talking, and when I start talking again, the movie now pauses, and you can hear me, and my video slides in from the side. So this is another automated sequence that's actually pretty different from what we saw in the first example. So let's switch over to the TriCaster screen and we can, can take a look at how we put this together. So there were a few things uh, in the TriCaster that we used to make this up. One thing which is really a, a, a very cool form of automation that's available in the TriCaster 
uh, is a something called comps or compositions. A composition in the TriCaster allows you to take layout elements on a screen and take a snapshot of all those elements in their, in their positions on screen. So if you look up here in the preview window, I have the composition that's set up for the host talking and the movie playing on the side. And I believe I can just switch here. And this is going to show you the composition with just the movie playing. Uh, so this gives you a sense of you know, the first piece of automation. So in the TriCaster itself, it actually is generating that entire in-between uh, animated sequence between one composition that gets set up and another composition. So what we did with that, now that we had those compositions there, is we set up a series of macros that we could use to uh, activate them. So if I go up to the macros and come in here, what I have now is two macros, one called comment movie and the other called watch movie. So if I just look at comment movie, it's really pretty simple. It's, it's stopping the movie from playing and then loading composition number two, which is the speaker and the movie together. And for the watch movie, uh, it's again, pretty simple. Uh, it's just uh, loading uh, the movie by itself as a composition and then playing the, starting the movie playing again. So that's all we really had in terms of the macros we set up. But what makes this interesting compared to you know, some of the other uses of macros as sequences is how we actually trigger the macro. So in this case, we're using the audio level of the host to decide whether a macro gets triggered. So what we're saying here is that when the audio on this host channel breaks minus 25 dB, which is sort of a normal talking voice that you'd have for a, uh, a speaker, I want you to be able to execute one of two macros. When it crosses above minus 25 dB, I want you to execute the comment movie macro, which gives the host and the movie together on screen with the movie paused. And when it drops below that level, it, does, uh, it executes the watch movie macro, which pulls the host off screen and starts the movie playing again inside the, the, the full window. So these are two very different styles of uh, automation, one being driven by actions that are being taken by the host, in this case, uh, through voice, and the other being triggered by a sequence of actions that are happening within a production. So let me go back to the camera. I, I think, you know, if you have any questions or, or, or whatever, please give us a call. If, you know, if you'd rather wait, we can certainly uh, love to have you join the Streaming Alchemy group. And if you can come back and ask questions there, that would be fantastic as well. But uh, if I... You know, I, th I think everything that we've done in this show uh, uh, gives you a, a broad sense of the types of things that are possible with automation. But I think the key thing to recognize is that these are just tools that you can start to use any way you want to add automation to your own productions. And I think looking into this, finding creative ways to enhance what you're doing with automation can be a big benefit to what you're putting on screen for your viewers. So that's it for our show today. I hope you found it useful. Uh, for our show next week, what we're going to be looking at is something interesting. We're going to be looking at polling in Facebook. So uh, until then, uh, please ask any questions you want in the, stream, uh, in the Streaming Alchemy group or on our uh, Facebook page. Uh, but we'll see you next week either way. Thank you.